Awesome. Thank you, Nalu. No, thank you, everyone. I mean, obviously, I've watched Transformation uh, Experts here for a while from afar, and so I'm excited to finally be in here. It's been on my to-do list, so uh, apologies. The first time's coming in doing this. I, I wish I'd have been in before that, but uh, I'm glad to be here. It actually, it really is perfect timing. So I have a conference coming up next week as well, and so this topic is going to be for um, more of the executive level. So I'm really excited because I believe this is a, a very mature group as far as kind of the agile methodologies and mindset. So uh, I'd, I'd love to get your feedback. So I'm basically going to try to present uh, some of the stuff that I'm thinking about and then uh, go through the exercise. And then I'd, I'd really appreciate, you know, what you liked, what you didn't like, and, uh, you know, what uh, what you might recommend I change. And so that the, the actual uh, full presentation will be next Thursday. Um, so thank you. Thank you for inviting me and allowing me to come and to work with me on this. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so the, uh, the title of the presentation is Leadership Transformation Blueprint. And so the main concept- um, Sorry, uh, just to let you know, you're screen. not sharing. Oh, not sharing not? No. oh, look at that. See, step one, See, paying attention. Now we got you, now we got All you. All right, yeah. we're here. Okay, so the main concept or idea that I want to try to communicate and the thesis that I, I want to hopefully uh, have walking away proving is that personal transformation is what's going to enable business and digital transformation. And so I'm hoping at, uh, especially at the executive level, you know, if we're, we talk a lot about the um, business and digital transformation. And so uh, one of the key takeaways that I hope people walk away with is that to, to truly do that, especially at the leadership level, it's going to start with personally uh, transforming. Uh, so that will lead into just a little bit of, you know, my perspective and background. So I, I actually just changed this week. So I, I just joined SCI as a um, business and technology consultant, uh, but I've worked in sales management. So, you know, built and led sales teams. And I think that's important because some of the things we're going to talk about of not putting um, identity and value into just performance is important because I literally have been paid just on performance. And I know that, uh, you know, returns are important. I've worked in uh, small and large businesses, uh, PMP certified, worked with teams on agile methodologies and mindsets. Um, I've done some strategic and financial planning and then tried to be a student of leadership and also on my own theology journey as well that will come into this. And all of that kind of leads into my perspective of some of the things that I want to share today. And so the agenda will have three steps to it. First one is why do we need to transform? Again, in this group, don't think we need to spend too much time on that, but we'll, we'll take a look at it and get your feedback. Um, two, are so, what are some of the kind of roadblocks to those personal transformations? And a lot of this is just some of my personal roadblocks, but so once again, love your feedback and, and thoughts as well. And then how do we overcome the transformation roadblocks? And so this is a blueprint, if you will, that uh, we can co-create together and that hopefully uh, others can use as well. All right, so we're gonna start with our first video. Absolutely, so that's it. That, that was my cue. So that I'm gonna was... go ahead and, and share my screen. <laughs> no worries. Let me know if you can hear. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my sound. Yeah, we can hear. I'll be back. 
All right. So I don't know if you guys enjoyed that movie as much as I did. So I don't think we're quite there yet, but the future is coming. And it was funny as I, I loved that movie and I was thinking about the age and it was about my daughter's age. I'm like, that was not probably appropriate at that age. So, but anyway, I digress. Uh, great movie and uh, loved all of that. And I do think that the future is coming and changing, but don't think we've quite reached that level yet. So, so what is the new normal? And so, I, you know, I started trying to think about some of this stuff and working on it. It was early in COVID. So I think some of the trends and things we're going to look at have continued to actually evolve even faster than we thought. So, you know, the, one of the books that I read on this digital revolution, and, you know, I think now we're moving into the information age and some, some deeper things as well, but moving from the, the hierarchy to the network structure of leadership. And so a good book on this was Seth Madison's The War at Work and just the way we see the world, um, how that's evolving. And he talks about things like just the hashtag me too, completely change culture how there's unprecedented transparency and access. There's no longer those walls um, to break down. And so I, I actually tested this. So he talks about how we can reach anybody. So e even simple things like I was able to like email, talk to and get reviews with some of the people's books we're gonna talk about today. And you can, you can hit them up on Twitter, you can send them an email, um, you can uh, write them or talk to them on the phone. And so the, the world is changing and all the, the historical stuff that used to be there is continuing to break down. And then uh, as we saw in the last video, increased rate of change. Um, I, I'm sure some of us are working on some of these things. We see it in our daily lives, how things are continuing to change and some of the algorithms that are continuing to even uh, watch and, and learn our behavior and how to sell us stuff. So I think we're gonna continue to see that rate of change and then the workforce and customer expectations. So this is actually one of the ones that I think looking at uh, COVID has just completely um, been, been pushed to the next level. And so, you know, from the great resignation to where people are purchasing and wanting purpose, wanting to know why we're doing things, wanting to know how we're doing things, how we're treating supply chain and where we're getting our materials from, um, not just caring about profit margins. That's something that's going to continue to the, the companies that are uh, focused on experience are building their brands and seem to be winning in the market. And so I think we're going to see that continue to go down that path. And then also, you know, innovation. And so collaboration and trust is a must. So, you know, historically, when you could just plan things out and build scale and, and know what was going to potentially work over the next 5, 10, 15 years is no longer there. And so the ability to innovate and re-innovate and to be resilient and to be agile are going to be things that we want to be prepared for if we're going to win um, in the new world. And so... What does, you know, trying to think through what does that mean um, to, to lead in the new world? And what are we, what are we talking about when we say we're, we're moving into this new leadership structure? And so, you know, less IQ, more EQ is one of the things that stood out to me. So not having all the answers, not being the smartest in the room, learning how to uh, build relationships and be self-aware and get the best out of each other. Uh, moving from that command and control um, having all the decisions made at a higher level and kind of pushed down to more empowering. And so leadering, leading being more of the creating the, the structure and the culture and some of the things that will help push decisions down to where people are actually the closest to the customers or to the work and can make, you know, the best decisions with the best information. Uh, moving from, you know, always knowing to more learning. So trying to prove ourselves uh, trying to prove ourselves wrong just as much as right and experiment and learn uh, what we what the right answer is. And so Annie Duke's book, Thinking in Bets, was was really good uh, at explaining that and helping me understand that, you know, it shouldn't we're not making the bet in the beginning to try to prove we're right. We really should be trying to learn what the right answer is. And then moving from short term outcomes uh, to more of a purposeful way of, of leading and doing business. And so, you know, we all have quarterly uh, performance things that we have to hit and the stock market and short term is definitely rewarded. But I think that it's been shown and proven that if you do the right things, even if it hurts short term, uh, that long term you will win. And that um, so Simon Sinek in his book, The Infinite Game, is actually very helpful in trying to process some of that and what it looks like to, to try to be uh, purposeful in our leadership. 
And so the, the summation, I guess, if you will, of that is we're you know, trying to create culture, relationships, and environment um, to empower others, I think is how we want to try to lead um, in the future and, and in this new normal. And so some of the leadership traits, again, this is a busy slide. What I'm trying to convey here is just the words that stick out to me were like the equip our teams, empower teams, and then encourage the team. And so um, a lot of these come down to values. So it was a lot on, on uh, one page. So as you guys kind of digest this, if you have a better way that I can try to pull this in and communicate it, I'm, I'm definitely open to it. But the goal is that, you know, there's these we want to equip teams and we want to help them be purpose driven. We want to teach them to be consistent and resilient and responsible. And then once we've equipped them, we can help empower them. And that's us, you know, as leaders being um, authentic and caring and humble and curious and having a growth mindset and then really just encouraging them, you know, being collaborative and then caring and enthusiastic and grateful um, and helping support them to uh, deliver uh, what the what the leaders and the teams are trying to do. Okay, so the next part, this was taken a little bit from when I was doing the PMI talk, really just focuses on like this future where we're moving to from not only um, project teams, but just outcome driven. Like his, before it was about monitoring, controlling and eliminating change. And we were measured a lot on budget, scope, schedule, or did you do what you said you were gonna do? And I think our mindset for the teams is even as leaders trying to get more into you know business value, innovation, taking risk, encouraging risk, accepting risk, um, taking advantage to the op the upside of risk and then adoption as well. So that we're, we're actually getting users and customers to use whatever it is we're trying to, to build or support. Okay, so again, now that we've talked a little bit about, you know, why we need to transform, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the barriers to this, this type of leadership. I mean, it's the type of leader that I want to be, and I think, you know, I think the great part about that is the type of leader that I think uh, I want to be is what I believe the, the future needs based on the things we were talking about. Um, but for me, one of some of the things that I've seen that if I'm seeking or needing uh, control or approval, um, validation, my image or comfort, those are things that get in the way from truly becoming or leading in that fashion. And so, you know, you may not have all of these, you, you may have some of these, or you may have some that aren't on this list, but these were the ones that resonated with me as I was kind of reflecting on things that don't allow me to be that type of leader. And so the first one we'll talk through is control. And so for me personally, um, control, try, try to make this story short. Two years ago, um, fell in playing basketball and ended up having like a, an internal review and found that I had a tumor on my adrenal gland. Uh, went through about a year process of, you know, testing and it was, it was going to be okay. And ultimately ended up in the doctor's office and he said, you know, hey, this uh, doesn't look good and we think it's cancer and we think it's spread from elsewhere. And you know, that was the, the toughest two weeks of my life. I remember like hugging my wife, kissing my wife, leaving the, leaving the, the uh, doctor's office there and just crying in the car, and, like yelling at God. And why are you doing this? And is this really, you know, the way this is going to end and just feeling completely out of control. But there was a, eventually a freedom that came out of that and learning that we really aren't in control. And the and good news is that, you know, the surgery was successful. The tumor was taken out. It was benign. So I'm still here. So I still get to talk. So that's good. Uh, but it, it was an eye-opening experience that, you know what, as much as I want control, I'm not. And releasing that is very uh, freeing and helpful. And then the other, you know, more business sense of that of control is obviously our hierarchies and our titles and our, the, the levels in an organization, how decisions are made. You know, we want, uh, we want control. And so that's, I think that's a natural progression that if we're going to become that type of leaders, we have to learn to be willing to release some of that. So, you know, we want control, we want to control and this me, I want to control outcomes, you know, once again, I don't want to get sick, I want things to go the way they should, I want to hit the numbers I'm supposed to hit, I want uh, people to be happy, I want circumstances and outcomes to go the way I want. So I think what I'm 
<clears throat> what I'm trying to become more of and what I want to look to influence rather than control is culture. So the things that I can control in culture, um, trying to build the relationships that will help influence the outcomes, and then the process and tools and things that we, we think can help drive that as well. And then the next one is approval here. And so if we can go to the next video yep. first. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me go ahead and share. Thank you. Do I need to be liked? Absolutely not. I like to be liked. I enjoy being liked. I have to be liked. But it's not like this compulsive need to be liked, like my need to be praised. <laughs> so, yes, I, uh, you know, I, I would say that that is something that, uh, you know, will, will stop us from, can you guys see my screen back again? Yep. Okay. You're seeing the, uh, this one. Okay. So I think that's something that will stop us from becoming the type of leader that I think we want to be and need to be, which is um, seeking approval. You know, and so Simon Sinek, the, the authenticity is when we say and do things we, we actually believe um, and, and learning to accept, you know, when not everybody's going to like us or agree with us and, um, you know, not trying to be a jerk about everything that we believe, but not feeling like we have to make everybody happy um, is a big part of, of being free enough to lead that way. Um, and I think this plays out so much on social media, you know, in the way that we um, I mean, I've literally like went and looked how many people looked at this and how many people liked it and how many people, I mean, that's just, you're, you're not going to be able to lead effectively um, through that. So that's one of the things I'm trying to tear down and be okay with, you know, I hope you guys like me, but I'm trying I'm to try to be okay, even if you don't. <laughs> and the next one's validation, right? So uh, I don't think we're going to be free enough to really uh, empower and lead people the way we want to when we're caring about title you know, where we're living, how much money we're making, um, what type of car we're driving, all of those things, you know, if that's the, where we're getting our validation or our worth or our value, um, you're, you, we can't truly give up, you know, control to others because they would be threatening sometimes some of these things. Um, and if that's what's, what's driving us, it's, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. And then I have some silly ones. I was thinking about this as well, you know, like <laughs> there are times that, uh, well, shouldn't be say times, there have been decades of my life being a Dolphins fan that I can allow the Dolphins to, you know, determine what type of mood I'm in for a Sunday, because, you know, they lose more than they should. So um, I'm trying to learn to not put any value worth or identity into them or like a silly golf game that literally nobody else cares about, but me um, can help determine how I'm feeling about myself for a weekend until I get back out there, you know, and that's, that's again, back to, to proving and that a lot of this falls back into the fixed mindset. And so when we talk some, some more later about growth mindset, that was something that really kind of helped me try to get out of some of that as well. Uh, the next one is image. And so, you know, there, there's more freedom confessing our weakness and shortcomings than in pretending we have it all together. And so, um, you know, I have been trying to live by this mantra and, you know, we all, especially in this digital world now, you know, image is something that is just powerful and trying to take us over and we live scrub lives and uh, we live, you know, a life that we're uh, putting up for show and we're taking out the things that we don't want people to see. And so I think it was about a year ago, I think it was like during COVID, you know, I posted about um, like my panic attacks, having serious anxiety and some of the things that I, that I went through and, you know, it was, it was risky. It could still hurt me in the future, but the authenticity of relationships that came out of that and the amount of people that actually connected on deeper levels, like that to me was worth much more, um, than people thinking that, you know, it's all together and everything's perfect and we, we have it all figured out. And then the last one uh, is also comfort. So, you know, like this, you know, getting in front of the group and doing the presentation next uh, next week as well. I mean, it's not not comfortable. Um, sometimes it's easier to sit there and, you know, come home and watch TV and watch The Office, love The Office, or, you know, watch Terminator 2 or go do something like that and just veg out on the couch rather than trying to put this time and effort into learning and growing. And so, you know, I'm learning that, you know, you could choose to be, 
you know, choose courage or you can choose comfort, but you can't have both of them. And Brene Brown in her book, uh, Dare to Lead, was very helpful in some of that. And we'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff later as well. Okay, so those are some of the, you know, blocks, our transformation. So now let's talk about some of the things that, that have helped and uh, some of the things that I think are valuable if we're going to try to, you know, move from the, the new, move into the new leadership style. And so this is a framework that I've been working on. And basically, it's just taking a bunch of stuff from different people and trying to put it together and, and uh, work through it myself. And so the first is um, identity. You know, so where our, our value and our, our worth comes from, like we have to have something that we're tied to um, outside of our performance, or we're not going to be able to let go and be free enough to, to let others, um, you know, to empower them. And then the, the next one there is purpose. And so for, for purpose, I think of that as our North Star, our direction. Um, Simon Sinek, you know, start with why, the infinite game. There, we have to have something that we're lining up to that is, you know, bigger than us. Also, so values, giving us guidance. Um, this, there was probably like four books that just really helped me through the, like this, this value, like trying to make value-based decisions. Um, from there, it was burn your goals uh, with, so Joshua Medcalf, I went on a, a little reading binge with, uh, with Joshua Medcalf and he has a bunch of books on that. It was burn your goals, transformational leadership. Um, he also had a bunch on, on habits of pound the stone and chop, chop wood, carry water, just instilling values and habits together. Um, so values gives us guidance, mindsets and mindsets can help give us clarity uh, the biggest one for, for me with mindsets was um, Mindset, the New Psychology of Success was Carol Dweck. I'm sure some of you probably read that, uh, but the book like literally changed my life as far as how we look at things from, you know, fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And as I began to reevaluate, you know, how I see that to, to me, this is like our worldview and, and how we intake things. And, you know, like I go back to validation, right? Like I can go back to high school and there were times I would take easier classes just to get A's. I had great grades. I was, you know, 4.0, but I took easy classes to make sure I got a 4.0. Like that was, I had a fixed mindset rather than, you know, trying my, my value was in, Hey, I'm a good student. I have good grades rather than, you know, pushing myself and learning more and, you know, learning to have good study habits, learning to be able to fail, learning to try harder things. Like I learned, I was teaching myself, no, find the easy way out. You know, it's probably, Part of the reason it took me eight years to get through school, but that's another story. Uh, and then habits. So trying to build um, consistency, right? So the things that we instill intentionally to try to uh, instill these purpose and values and mindsets to cultivate those daily, um, being intentional with our habits are something that I found that it, you know helps on the journey. So you know, purpose, we're trying to have why when we have our values there and our mindsets, like how we want to do things. And then the habits are really what we want to do, trying to pull that, that all together. So through that, I came up with this template to help me write some of this out. And it's hopefully a tool that we'll walk through together and uh, we'll all try to fill out together, uh, co-create and then co-create your own as well, hopefully if it uh, adds value for you, but it really is, tried to put these together. So what does this mean for, for me? I think this, you know, all of it besides potentially the identity, I think is, can be used for an individual and a team. Um, and the identity really is, you know, who are we uh, apart from our, apart from our performance, having our purpose, like what is our why, what drives us, what motivates us? Um, what are our values? Like, who do we want to become? What do we want to be known for? You know, the last day, what's going to really matter to us? Uh, and then the mindsets, what is the worldview, beliefs, attitudes that we want to try to cultivate and be intentional about? Because I can tell you things like, you know, fixed mindset is easy. I didn't have to work at that. <laughs> having, a, having a growth mindset takes time and effort and, you know, intentional uh, work. And then some habits. Like, so what do we want to consistently do to try to re, um, instill those and cultivate purpose, values, and mindsets? All right, so before, all right, so now let's talk a little bit about identity. So this is where we get into group participation. So I'd like to maybe take two minutes and then uh, maybe if we want to start a Jamboard to, to get a little bit of feedback here, if you were to say like, and 
you know, if you're comfortable sharing, and by the way, this isn't a, a two minute exercise, you know, this takes deep work and time, but uh, can start here, you know, what, and maybe you've already done it, maybe you know this already. So if you want, if you want to share, um, you know, what defines you, um, gives you your value and worth, how would you define yourself apart from occupation or performance? And then what if taken away would make you feel like life is not worth living? So sorry for the, the deepness there, but I'll give us about two minutes. And if anybody feels uh, like sharing, we'll, we'll discuss those with the group. Yeah, I'm going to say that uh, you can use the Jamboard to put on a sticky or you can use the chat or you can open your mic and have a conversation and it's up to you. Um, but we really appreciate the feedback there. I'm feeling this is going to get very emotional. <laughs> <That> last <laughs> All right, we have some stickies on the Jamboard. So um, is it okay if I uh, share? Sure, absolutely. That's what absolutely. we're here for. So, awesome. So let me go ahead and share. Okay. Oh, oops. Oops. That helps. I couldn't see the questions at the same time that I was looking at the blank Jamboard. Uh, uh, held me up just a moment there. So. Okay, give me a second. So I, I just have one questions. screen. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Let me go ahead and share the questions uh, on a sticky. Uh, uh, yeah, let me quickly put it here. So this Great is question subject. number one. I'm going to put it here. All right. That's question number one, and I'm going to ahead and put question number two and three. Yeah, great subject, Joseph. This is uh, you get people talking deep, man. You go. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put question number two. Oops, here. Maybe. Uh, yeah, there we go. And I think for time's sake, when we get to the next one, I'll just pick one question. All right, no worries. And question number three, I'm going to place it here. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, those of you that are sharing. I'm just reading them here. Dad. Family, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want me to share. Um, like I can read some of the stickies. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we have under. I put here. The, okay. What defines you? Gives you value and worth? Then I have some of the answers. I am a daughter, sister, mother, grandmother, wife, and child of God. Um, um, then I am empath an, an empathetic listener. Um, then we have being an agile coach mm -hmm. as what defines you, gives you value and worth. Um, then we have, I try to put on a smile on, people fa on people's faces, help each other and bring out the best in people the best I can. Um, define, su define success of others have helped a lot along the way. Um, then on question number two, how would you define yourself apart from your occupation or performance? Family allows me to best regard uh, vulnerable, which in turn allows me to be more, more vulnerable with others who might judge, but I'm comfortable because I know my family will always uh, be there for me when I'm happy, mad, or sad. All right. Then we have, uh, I bring in my practical experience, not value. To go deep, uh, I, am good, uh, I am who God says I, God says I am. I'm not who people says I am. Committed. Just to that. Oh, mm -hmm. and Jedi. Definitely a Jedi. <laughs> Jer Jedi? I'm sorry. Jedi. Uh, okay. Okay. And then what if taking away uh, would make life feel like it's not worth living? Freedom, that's my car. Um, 
freedom of music, respect, and someone said fear. I don't know who that would be. <laughs> awesome. Well, no, thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Thank you all for participating. Um, and as you can, you can see, there's, there's a lot there. So I think that is one of our first steps is helping to put that down for ourselves of, of uh, being intentional about where we want our identity to be. And then the next is purpose. And so maybe we can, uh, I'll try to keep this down to one question. So what do you stand for? Oh, sorry. I was, I was sharing my slides to myself here, aren't I? No worries. Let's go back to that. Actually, I stole this. I think uh, many of you that know. Aunt, do you see it now? Purpose? I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. As many of you know, Anjali Leon. So this was one of the questions that uh, she was uh, pushing on me with purpose. And so, you know, if you can wrap that up with what matters to you in the end, you know, what are your strengths and talents, but really for your purpose, um, the question that that she would ask me that resonated that I stole from her for this was uh, what do you stand for? So maybe if we could just take another minute and if anybody wants to share on the uh, jam board, what you stand for, what your purpose is. The stand-up count, if it does to you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have someone in the chat. I stand for kindness. I'm getting too old and intolerant for people not to be kind to each other. I stand up for others who can stand up for themselves. Truth sometimes harsh, but always honest. And fairness. fairness. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all. Honesty and transparency. Thank you, Beth. So, you know, purpose, writing that down, that, that question was helpful for me in trying to, um, you know, work through that. Transparency. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to take it back here for a second. And go on to, so values. So values facilitation. Um, so as you saw in that, that other slide, I forget how many it was, but it was like 18 different values that I had kind of pulled together from a lot of the different readings and things that um, resonated and, and kind of tried to outline the type of leader that I wanted to be. But when I read Dare to Lead, um, from Brene Brown, she had a really cool exercise that I stole a little bit from here, which is give her credit, adapted from Dare to Lead, which was trying to limit it down. And I, I don't know if two is the right answer, but, you know, two to three, somewhere in that, like really break it down to what are the core values and then beginning to break those out into some, some subcategories. But, you know, if you really want to try to make value-based decisions as a leader, 18 of them can get conflicting, right? And it's, it can be uh, uh, more challenging. And so it, I found it very helpful to try to work through, um, try to pick two, right? So you could Google, here's an example. Um, you know, uh, you could Google a bunch and score and prioritize them, but just pick two that you, you know, really resonate with you, that you can find things that are, that are underneath those, if you will, that can help. But as I try to think about values as a driver, and especially when you're talking in the leadership, if you want values to drive um, your decision making and to be the umbrella that, you know, that, that happens under, then pick two. And so as an example, with those two, then select two more supporting. So, you know, for me, one example is faith. So faith is one of my core values, as I told you, theology and things mean a lot. So like humility is a value I believe supports that and something that I think is underneath that. And so um, gratitude, you know, could be another thing that's underneath that. And so, but at the end of the day, like that faith is a core one that those fall underneath. Um, and so I would, uh, if you, if you guys already have them, or if you want to take a minute, maybe put it back on the jam board and just pick, you know, what are some, some potential core values um, for yourself. 
and you can steal from uh because they won't be able to see the list if we go to the jam board but as i said this is a mature group you most of you probably already have many of those laid out okay so anybody just want to put it some in the chat maybe then so we don't go go back and forth some jam board maybe some uh couple things in the chat yeah uh, we have integrity integrity is everything without how without it i guess is how can you move forward thank you <laughs> no one can say it yeah <laughs> okay good maybe one or two more then we'll keep going what's a what's a core value for you Service, okay, help, like it. It's definitely good. Gratitude, growth, awesome. Harmony, thank you. Okay, so as you can see, and this is this is one, um, you know, like I said, identity, I think really is personal. That, that doesn't necessarily apply to a team, but when you start getting to purpose, I think teams can have purpose, but values really, this is if you can work through this together with a team, I think it really helps bring some of that cohesity and understanding of what's important um, and, and what matters most and how are we going to make decisions and how are we going to treat each other uh, as a team. So I think you can do this for yourself and for your team. All right. So then we're going to jump next to beliefs and attitudes uh, with back to mindsets, impact performance. So this will be our last video. I'll turn it over to. So coach, how strong is Westview this year? A lot stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a loss, Brock? Well, not if I know we could beat him. Come here, Brock. You too, Jeremy. What, am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl again, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want me to go to the 30? I think you can go to the 50. 50. I can go to the 50 if nobody's on my back. I think you can do it with Jeremy on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. OK. You're going to give me your best? I'm going to give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I don't want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. <laughs> Good tight hold, Jeremy. All right, let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground, just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. It's going to be good effort. That way, Brock. You keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, Brock. Good strength. <laughs> That's it, Brock. That's it. Am I the 20 yet? Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more in you than that. I ain't done. I'm just resting a second. You got to keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving it. Keep, keep your knees off the ground. That's it. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on, keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know I'm, he's heavy. I'm bad out of strength. Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going. You're doing good. You keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts. I know it hurts. You keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30. 
any more sap. You keep going, Brock. Come on! Keep going! Burn! And let it burn! Burn! burn. It's all hard! You keep going, Brock! Come on! Come on! Keep going! You promised me your best! Your best! Don't stop! Keep going! Too hard! It's not too hard! You keep going! Come on, Brock! Give me more! Give me more! Keep going! Twenty more steps! Twenty more! Keep going, Brock! Give me your best! Don't quit! No! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Don't quit! Don't quit! Don't quit! Brock Kelly, you don't quit! Keep going! Keep going! Go, Brock Kelly! You don't quit on me! No! You keep going! You keep going! Go, Brock Kelly! You don't quit! Keep going! Keep going! Go, Brock Kelly! You don't quit on me! No! You keep going! You keep going! Go, Brock! Ten more steps! Ten more! Ten more! Ten more! Keep going! Don't quit! Give me your Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. Brock, you are the most influential player on this team. If you walk around defeated, so will they. Don't tell me you can't give me more than what I've been seeing. You just carried a 140-pound man across this whole field on your arms. Brock, I need you. God's gifted you with the ability of leadership. Don't waste it. Coach? Can I count on you? Yes. Coach? What is it, Jeremy? I weigh 160. So, all of that to say that I do believe strongly that our uh, beliefs and attitudes strongly impact our team and our performance and how our energy that we walk around with and how we treat others um, really impacts ourselves and those around us. So, let's talk a little bit then about how do we cultivate those mindsets. Um, and so, maybe we do... Uh, because we only have one more after this. So maybe we do a jam board. How much time do we have left? What time does this end? Forget what time we started. It never nope. ends. But the, <laughs> Normally we try to finish around maybe 7.15. But you perfect. Can again. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll take two minutes here. Maybe we just put it in the chat then to, to keep it moving. Um, so for the mindset facilitation here. So what are some current beliefs or attitudes that could hurt your ability to, to deliver. And I think this is also good with facilitating with teams. Um, but, the, you know, again, for ourselves, uh, what new beliefs or attitudes could improve your ability to deliver? And then what words and types of language is important to you? Um, are we keeping it in the chat, right? Yeah, we'll just keep it in the chat. So maybe some... some uh, You know, what, um, what are some of those beliefs? So, you know, so, so I'll give you some examples for, for me, as I said, so fixed mindset, right? So that I have to prove myself or I have to, I can't take risks, that I can't fail. Like if you, if you have that and, you know, sometimes we're in an organization where if you feel that way, um, your, your mindset, your belief, your attitude is going to be impacted. I've, I've been in sales organizations and I've been uh, grateful to be in some very, very successful sales organizations. And it, it always started with belief. And I've also seen some poor sales organizations. And the, the only differentiator is do people really truly believe? And a lot of times those it's those beliefs then that begin to affect attitude, affect the behaviors, affect the um, habits that are then built. And so then the it's it's the circle of what the performance becomes, you know, those um, those limiting beliefs, you know, so it's it is 
crazy to see some of this sometimes how big of an impact this can have on an individual and a team or even in, in myself right like when i feel it's going to matter there t- i go the extra mile and they're like i said comfort's easy to slip back into so if you're not if i'm not if i'm not cultivating the right mindset to continue to push then it's easier to slip into the you know let's just watch the office tonight than it is let's go you know join the uh agile transformation experts and, and do a talk you know so those those things have an impact on that. All right, let's take a look at what some people put in here for us. Uh, yep, how can I add value for them? Yep, I, I won't try. New belief, I can ask people and get help to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, nine, I like that when your mind will naturally defend what you believe and what you feed it. Uh, Going against the status quo will be looked at unfavorably. Yes. I do. Yeah. In accepting the senior. So this is something that, you know, once again, I to me, this all tries to fit together when you're putting together what are my values and then what are my mindsets and then using that to cultivate the habit so that, you know, when you don't just accept uh, something that maybe goes against the values or goes against uh, the purpose that you're laying out. Okay. That's great. Okay, so next is habit, right? So beliefs are important, but then we can also choose intentional um, habits. So what habits could hurt your ability to deliver? Uh, What new habits could help you deliver? And what behaviors should be encouraged or rewarded for yourself and for your team? Yes, I mean professional practice here, <laughs> but I but I also mean things. A lot of times, what I mean here in this talk is also self care, right? So I mean, like when I one habit that was not great when I was having like five cups of coffee every day it wasn't a great habit. I mean, uh, it was it was uh, consistent though. Um, you know, other habits can just be once again, what are you intentionally doing for yourself and for your team? A habit can be if I'm feeling a certain way, I'm going to go have a conversation with the person, right? So uh, a habit can be, I'm going to pick up the phone and and talk to someone. A habit can be, um, I'm going to create this behavior of making sure that um, I'm walking over and, and seeing people if we're in the same building or that I'm doing things, you know, so it doesn't just have to be something like I want to stop drinking coffee or I don't, you know, I want to cut down my carbs. It can, it can be behaviors for habits for the team and for yourself that you want to do. So an example of behaviors that can hurt your ability to deliver is, you know, passive aggressive, right? So, you know, I copied everybody on email and we're, you know, we, I'm going to stop doing that. And I, there, I'm trying to, to, to not do that. I don't try not to copy yeah, people you're unless it's needed. And you're only making 46 particular. So yeah, new Whip limits, I like that. Yep, new habit breaks old mindsets. Know when to say no. Encourage. Taking calming breath. Yeah, yeah, leave a, leave my video off. En- yeah, engage in meaningful. That's a great one. It's easy to slip into, you know, turning it off. I like it. Getting mad. Be like, yeah. So anyway, that, that those are the kind of things we can think about for ourselves personally. Um, for, for myself personally, I think about self-care. I think about professional, like how I want to treat coworkers. Um, and then I also think about uh, for a team, how do we want to engage? What are the habits that we want to, to do? And so that can be, you know, how we, how, how we're going to meet, how we're going to communicate, how we're going to handle conflict, things like that, that we, we build into our uh, playbook. All right. So by now, hopefully you have begun to kind of think about what this would look like for you. And so um, I'll share just kind of where I'm at at this point with this. So, you know, as the team, which at this point was me, so this was Joe Milton, and that my identity is being fully known, fully loved, fully accepted, apart from my, my merit, based on Christ's righteousness and grace. So that's where I wanted to find my identity, my value, my worth. Again, that's everybody's personal one there, but that's for me. So for purpose, like, so why, you know, why, what do I want to do? What's my direction? I want to try to create environment and culture that elevates people and performance so that we can enjoy meaningful work and connection. My core values uh, are faith and connection. 
And so underneath faith, that's things like humility and gratitude, trust, consistency, authenticity, integrity. And then for connection, things like collaboration and empathy and care and accountability. Um, and then the mindsets that we talked about. So I want to you know, push myself into growth over fixed. I want to learn to be more curious instead of trying to prove I'm right. Uh, I want to work towards the abundance over scarcity, that there's enough for everybody. And that, you know, uh, leaning towards gospel and grace over judging others. And then for my habits to try to build onto that, it's, you know, meditation, taking podcast walks, uplifting music, reading, prayer, and building accountability. So those are the, the things that, you know, these, and this is like a checklist for me that I can come back and see how I'm doing. And sometimes it's good. And sometimes I need work on some of those, but this blueprint or uh, template, if you will, helps me to try to be intentional and give myself a check on that. All right. So for the business uh, um, view of it, it's like, so how do you know if this is working if you're a leader, right? And so there are you know, metrics you can put on business value from a problem being solved to ROI. We can do customer satisfaction. There are surveys and retention and online reviews, innovation, um, new solutions, pro new products, culture, you know, your performance, diversity, feedback, um, employee engagement. So there's, a, there's a bunch there, right? So I guess part of what I hope comes away from what we're talking about from a leader is that you have to trust that if we do things the right way for the right reason, that the results will be there and that we, you know, if you're building something and you want, you want to focus on the, the outcomes during the design. So if I'm trying to design something, but once you're executing or once you're in it, like you have to let go of that. I, I use the example in one of the previous talks about just like, you know, my golf game, right? Like I can't be thinking about my score while I'm in the middle of my golf game. I need to be focusing on my breath and my technique and where I'm at. Like, right. I, I can't think about the, the outcome. Like right now it's focus on what I can control and try to do it, do whatever I can. And, and at the end of the day, the outcome is going to be the outcome. And I think it gives you the best chance to get that outcome. If you let, you know, set this stuff up, measure track, I'm all for that, but day to day, you got to let it go and, and do the right things for the right reasons. And then trust that the outcomes are going to come where they need to. And you know what, if they don't, that you're okay, <laughs> you know, that you're working within your identity, your purpose, your values, uh, and the mindsets and habits you want, and maybe you, you, it's a learning opportunity. All right. So again, the, uh, the hopeful takeaway is that personal transformation um, begins to let us enable business and digital transformation. And for our next steps, if you feel like it, please create your own transformation blueprint um, if you haven't done so already. And then please share your feedback. I, I really uh, would appreciate it, especially as uh, I get to do this again. Um, so I, I appreciate you letting me work through some of it and talk through some of it with you. But definitely I'm open to your feedback. And then if you want to connect, if we're not connected already, please uh, reach out. So here's my LinkedIn, email, cell. And I am now with SEI Miami as well. Um, and in the slides that I think are going to be shared, I also put some, uh, I'll, I'll jump back to questions, but I put some of the books that were just impactful for me. So if you're wanting to do some of the growth mindset stuff and read some more, here are some good ones. All right. Before we, we end it then, any comments, questions, or concerns? Um, is this, would you would you like us to share feedback via those those vehicles? Did I miss that? I think I think that's where you wanted us. No, to No, that's share a good. Feedback. Yeah, you can either send it to me on like. I mean, I, are we going to do an actual survey? Hey, Lou. So um, we're going to actually have a LinkedIn connection that you're going to be able to communicate with him directly, also in LinkedIn. Yep. Um, so okay. I think that that could okay. probably be some good feedback for you. Awesome. Um, and and like we said, and I don't think everybody heard this. You can't leave. So, yes, Joe, <laughs> Joe, that's it. Just so you understand, that doesn't just because you go out for a little while, you're gonna have to come yeah. back. We, we okay? might so this is not a one-time deal. Yeah. 